Good morning. It is time for math. And we are working on a new page in math. It's page 115. And it's called line plots. So I'm going to give you a chance to find page 115. I'll pull it up on my screen share. So my computer's running slow again this morning. Probably all of the all of the work we've been doing. Let's see. There it is. It just hides like right in the middle. It can be in a totally random spot. I just don't know. Um, so there it is. We found it. This is page 115. It's called line plots. Let me show you the number at the bottom of it. Yep. There it is. And we're only working on page 115 today. Um, I just sent your parents uh, a text and I feel really bad that I had to be so, so stern with it. But it's very, very, very important that you watch every single video. We tried to make them easy and put them all on YouTube. So you don't even have to have a computer to watch the video. But you do need to watch the videos because if you don't, some of our lessons are not on workbook pages. You can't just do the workbook pages and get all the assignments. A lot of them we've done on paper. A lot of them we've done on live lined paper. We've done some on jam boards. And if you do not watch the videos, you'll miss the assignment and you won't get a grade for that assignment. Get it. An F on it. I certainly don't want that because we've worked too hard this year. So please, please, please make sure you are watching every single video. And if you missed any, go back and watch them. You're going to need them. They all aren't very long, but you have to watch them in order to get all of the answers on your assignment. So having said that, let's go into line plot plots. And line plots are another way to record data. We've been doing a whole lesson on graphs and charts. And um, this is another type of chart. This is a line plot. A line plot is a little different in that it records occurrences. And what I mean by that is the, the, you have the number of people who do a certain thing on a line plot. And it's represented by an X on a line that kind of looks like a number line. And every X stands for one person who did this thing or one animal who did whatever, one occurrence, one thing that you were measuring. So line plots are a little bit different. We aren't going to have that key at the bottom like we do on some of our, our graphs. Let's read the directions. Oh, sorry, name and date. Almost forgot. Thanks for reminding me. Name and date. Let's be the 21st. And here we go, line plots. The directions say, use the line plot to answer the questions, okay? Each Monday, students who bring in new pencils hold them up. Mrs. O'Malley puts an X above the number of new pencils that each student has, okay? So you can see here, here's my label, my label. It's also my title for this graph. It says the number of new pencils. So if someone brought in two new pencils, the X's would go here. If someone brought in one new pencil, an X would go here. If someone brought in five, an X would go here. So you can use the information right here to find out what, how many pencils were brought in. Okay. So if we look on that question number one, it says, how many students brought in four new pencils? Well, it's pretty easy. I just go to the four, there it is. And I count the X's, one, 
two. So how many students brought four new pencils? Two did. Okay. And number two says, how many students brought at least three new pencils? And math words are so important because if we didn't look at at least, we would have just wondered who, how many we would have just answered, how many brought three pencils. And that's not right. The question says at least, that means three or more. So we have to count three and we have to count whatever's over here as well. So that's why it's always important to look at our math words. They're really going to give us a lot of information. And this one wants to know at least three new pencils. So three new pencils or four new pencils or five new pencils. We have to add all of these up. So we look at the three, which has one, and four, which has two. So we go one, two, three. So our answer is three, okay? And then number three says, how many students brought new pencils? Well, that includes everybody on our graph, everybody. So really, all we have to do is count the Xs. One, two, three, four, five, six. And our answer is six. Okay. They're not hard and it's kind of fun. It's a different way to do a graph on this. And let's go to number four. The question says, which data does the line plot organize? And remember, we talk about graphs and charts are designed so that they can organize data, so they can take information and put it on a picture that's fast and easy for you to see. So if we answer the question, our choices are the total number of pencils each student has, or the number of new pencils each student has. Those are the choices. Let's go back to the question. Which data does the line plot organize? Well, our answer to this question is going to be right here in the title. And the title is called Number of New Pencils. And if I look down here, this one says the total number of pencils. And this one says the number of new pencils. Do you see how that one corresponds with that one? Right. So that's going to be our answer. Right there. Okay. And now we're down to a different one. So if you need to, if you're not finished with this part, go ahead and stop the video, finish up this part, and then come back to the next one. Okay. And let's read the next one. It says, Mr. LeBlanc took his class to the library. The library allows each student to check out up to five books at a time. And the question, the title of the plot of the line plot is number of books checked out. Number five says, how many students checked out at least, there's our word again, at least two books? So we're going to count the ones who checked out two, the ones who checked out three, the ones who checked out four, and the ones who checked out five. We don't care about this one because we're asking at least two books. That's two books or more. So let's count them. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. And it wants to know how many books did the greatest, there's another math word, number of students check out. Now, greatest number, that's the biggest number on our line. What is the biggest number on our line? Well, there it is, right there, five. 
That's the greatest number. And it wants to know how many students did that. So now we just go to our five because that's the greatest number. And we count that one, two, three, four. How many books did the greatest number of students check out? Now, line plots to me are, are a good way to organize information, but boy, they've got numbers in there all over and it's kind of confusing. So you really have to stop and think to make sure you're getting your information correct, okay? Check yourself over and over and over. It's always good to check back, you know that. And then the last one says, how many students checked out books? Hmm. Well, this would be all of the students. I see a cat outside. Hi, confetti. So this wants to know how many checked out books. So remember, I told you that the answer to this is going to be counting every single X. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 15 is our answer. And the difference between number five and number seven is number seven wants to know all of the books and number five only wants to know two and above, okay? Little bit um, different. It's a different kind of way to organize information. Um, but it's it's interesting, you can, you can kind of see where they're getting at and, and it does help you organize information quickly. So that's page 115, that's it. I'll see you next class for handwriting. Good job on this. Again, thank you for all of the work you're doing. I appreciate everything you're doing and I miss you terribly and I'll see you later, bye-bye.